I feel like every practice shot I've ever taken since I was little. I've tried to envision the target being the biggest bull elk I've ever had the chance at. Little did I know that these very practice shots were leading up to that actual moment in my life. For shot food in the promised land, 24 hours got a gun in my hand. See, it's brush prayer by as I can see. God bless manifest destiny. It was kicking off to look a lot like last season. Smoky, dry, and very little elk activity overall. But I know how fast that can all change. Now, I don't typically dive right into where I think the elk are at on the first day out, unless I'm feeling super confident. And after last season, I wasn't feeling all that confident. So my plan was to hit a good vantage point, where I could watch and listen a fair distance and just get a good feel for what was in the area this year. Charged in fast as the morning broke, thunder and lightning in a cloud of smoke. Forts are circling overhead, there's a number to my death song. Covered in blood and on the sea red, living too fast, it won't last long. Ever on the run, never look back, son. Live by the gun and you're gonna die young. Ever on the run, never look back, son. You live by the gun and you're gonna die young. bugles. That's about as many bugles as I heard last year. Total. <laughs> so that's a good start to the year. One bull looks like a really big bull. I just can't get a great look at it. I can see four different bulls right now. exactly where I was hoping they would be. I can't tell what he is exactly. I can just tell he's a big mature bull. With a few satellites. See, oh yeah, there's still four cows. Well, we've got several bulls spread out across the draw here. It's first morning out. One, well, I'd say two herd bulls. We got a bull bugling over here in the timber. And a bull over here with quite a few cows. And then satellites kind of mixed within, but quite a bit of talking. I mean, way more than I expected to hear this first morning for as hot as it's been. And just 
reports we've been getting. So this is a great start to the year. Just don't have a good wind. So I'm just watching them. September 5th actually. I said the date wrong this morning. It's our first day out here which was a great morning. We got into more elk than I thought we were going to for as hot as it is. It's about 98 degrees right now which is pretty typical for this time of year here. But it brings certain challenges that's for sure. So we've kind of come in on the edge here, going to leave the side by side here and then hike in. We've got the wind in our favor. We'll just see what happens. Found a good bowl this morning. Be nice to put an arrow in hand. evening but the wind is just all over the place. We came all the way around to get on the other side of them. Turkey just went to roost right here. And then the wind swirled and went that way. So now I'm afraid to move. We already jumped that one bull. It feels a bit more like elk hunting weather this morning. Got a little air blowing, it's a little cooler. It's our third morning. We'll see what we can get into here. Get up on top where we can kind of listen in glass. Hopefully hear something or spot something. That first morning really had my hopes up. That was more activity and bugling than I had heard all of last season. But the days that followed completely shut off, and I couldn't find an elk anywhere. It was only the third day, so I wasn't discouraged. But I could see the signs of another slow September starting to unfold. The few years of drought were starting to show the effects. Once active wallows had gone completely dry, and I was finding very little fresh sign overall. I 
Either way, it felt great to be back out here. I wait for this all year long. The morning of September 8th started off slow. No elk and no bugles. Nothing even way off that I could hear. So I decided while it was still prime time, I'd go check an area where I'd seen some mule deer and see if maybe I could find a nice buck to go after before everything bedded down. Where the pavement ends, on X begins. That's when I spotted this bull. I could tell right off he was big. There was no question I'd shoot this bull. What I didn't realize was that it was a bull I had started hunting back in 2018 when I found this set of sheds. Now I had never bow hunted this area, but after finding this set of sheds, I decided to dedicate my time trying to hunt and kill this bull. Then the bull vanished and I just couldn't find him. Over the next several months I looked over a lot of bulls in a lot of different country hoping he'd show up, but he never did. So on September 10th when I was given this face-to-face -face opportunity, I didn't pass it up. I didn't give up on the bull though. In the spring of 2019, I was excited to see if I could find his sheds in the same spot again, and nothing. So I returned in the fall and spent 21 days looking for the bull, hoping to turn him up. On September 28th, I snuck into within 60 yards and arrowed this nice six by seven, closing out my 2019 season. In 2020, I not only didn't find his sheds, but I also didn't get the tag to hunt the area the bull lived in. So I decided to try something different and was able to fill my tag on the morning of September 19th. In the fall of 2021, I spent nearly 28 days hunting and never did punch my tag. I had pretty much given up on the fact that the bull was even still alive. I figured by this time, he was probably sitting in somebody's barn or laying in the bottom of a coulee somewhere. Either way, I figured he was most likely dead. Which brings well, us to here. September 8th. We just spotted a really big bull. Bedded all by himself. It's kind of starting to sprinkle. We're gonna have to like really be on our game here. It's dead quiet. It's loud. This is a big old boy. But exciting. Man, he is like a big six by seven with a big flyer. I would love to get in on this bull. I really had no idea at the time that this was the bull I had the sheds off of. I just knew it was a big bull and I couldn't mess this up. Any wrong step in the process, and it's game over. Now 
Now I have to get into my head and tell myself things like, he's 40 yards, third pin from the top, pick a spot, find your anchor points, and follow through. Just do what you've done in your backyard a thousand times. Well, it's been right at about an hour. I don't think we even had to give him that. Like, I've never been so confident in a shot. But we did. And we're just going to ease in here and uh, hopefully find this bowl. He is so pretty. I'm so pumped. Go we'll see if we can find him. right by that tree right there. He came out, turned broadside. I hit him right there at 40 yards. Go to where I hit him first. Oh, there's my arrow. Bigger than I thought. Oh, oh, oh my god, dude. Oh. <laughs> oh my goodness. still in complete awe was able to put this together and now we have rain coming in which feels amazing the way that it's been in these temperatures helped cool it down just in time for me to get him cut up and work on him I've hunted my whole life for a bull like this it just this is what you dream about right here just trying to take it in best I can. Doesn't happen very often when everything just comes together. The wind, the terrain. It's just a beautiful bull. So much character. What a great archery bull. My best one yet. No question. So, so stoked. Man. I'm gonna bust out the knife here and 
get him quartered up, get the hide off of him. It's nice and cool, which helps way better than yesterday. This rain feels amazing right now. So, gonna get to work, but what an awesome bowl. Since finding his sheds in March of 2018, I never once put eyes on this bull until four hours before stalking him. And he died on the exact same hillside I found both sets of sheds. I really believe this elk was here to live out his final days on this earth. He looked old, he moved old, and was in an area that he'd frequented in years past when his energy and testosterone levels would hit their lowest. It could be coincidence, or it just could be the perfect ending to this old bull's life.